Uh, he knew I had played the part. I knew what his hopes and dreams going into it were. And so there was already uh, a lot of our homework was done for us. The father-son relationship kind of was built in. And I felt after being representing as The Flash for 24 years, I felt very honored to be able to come back as his father and hand off the franchise to him in the early days when he was just feeling his way into the role. So basically the way we prepared for those scenes, since a lot of our homework was done for us, was we learned our lines, we set the camera shots, we looked at each other and we told the truth. So that's the purest form of acting. Did I answer your question? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I hate that people can't see you. Here, okay, now ask your question. Um, <laughs> my name is Helen. I love the show, the, the new Flash. Um, so do you like the, like, how did it feel from going to play Barry Allen to Henry Allen? Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, when I heard how Jeff Johns had sort of blown up the Allen family, I mean, for, for OG Flash fans in the house, you know, uh, Emmett Walsh was not wrongfully imprisoned for killing Priscilla Pointer in front of a 10-year-old me, right? So when I heard that was the new story, I thought, well, if they come to me, that's the role I would want to play. Because, yeah, it's the same franchise, but it's a different enough telling of it that it, I, I, you know, I would want to play that version of Henry Allen, even if I had never played Barry. And the fact that I played Barry helped me play Henry better because I understood him. I understood uh, what he was going through. Understood his character. You know what I mean? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Kevin, and I want to know uh, how different was the experience of playing Barry Allen in the, the 90s to being uh, Jay Garrick in uh, The New Flash or just being, or just doing the voice acting in, as Professor Zoom? Well, it was a different day in 19... I, I gotta tell you, I did Never Ending Story 2 and we shot that in uh, Germany and in Vancouver. It was very strange. Whenever you see me outside, I'm in Vancouver. When the door opens and I walk inside, I'm on a set in Munich. So, just a little bit of trivia. But what was your question? Oh, okay. like just how like different was the experience for each? In 1989, yeah. when I went out to, you know, I heard that there was this script circulating, and I have to tell you, I was, I was a little leery about going into a costume character. <laughs> a little leery. Somebody, all right, no, no pun intended, Mitch Leary, right? Death by ice cream. What a way to go. But anyway, where was I? Um, because it had been, on TV, superheroes had been spoofed, pretty much, up to that time. And I had been on Broadway, I was delusional enough to have, uh, let me try that word again, delusional enough to have uh, aspirations as a serious actor. So I wasn't sure that, I, that that would be something I'd be good at, but April Webster, uh, multiple Emmy Award winning casting director said just read the script, read Danny Bilson and Paul DeMeo's treatment and I read it and I found out some things. I found out in our telling that it was an unblessed son of a cop family where real cops work the streets but Barry goes into the crime lab so that his mom does not have to worry that all of the men in her family w might not come home that night. And so Barry goes into the crime lab. His dad never really validates that, you know. And so then his brother gets killed by a motorcycle gang. He gets these powers, doesn't want them until his brother gets killed. And then he assumes them to avenge his brother's death. So now I'm, I'm, my imagination is going. And they wrote it truthfully. Then when there was humor in the script, you know, it was based in character and the moment, like when we were watching the boxing match and, you know, I can't believe it was over so quickly, you know, she says to me. And uh, then you realize we're watching boxing. But in 1990, it was a very different day. Comic books had not gone mainstream, you know. The rest of the entertainment industry has finally caught up with you, okay? But in 1990, they hadn't quite gotten there yet, right? 
And so uh, it was a totally different thing. Now we flash forward to 2014 and we go to... <laughs> I got a million of them, and the sad thing is they're all unintentional. <laughs> no, but anyway, so we're there at San Diego Comic-Con, 180,000 people take over the town. Uh, 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 Jesse Martin and I step out onto a balcony, there's all these people, and this cheer goes up, and Jesse says, we haven't even done anything yet. We premiered our new pilot in Hall H, which was oversold, 7,000 people who had slept outside. So the audience was there. Comics were mainstream. Grant, where I was a little, con you know, a little self-conscious about being in the suit. Grant wears that suit like a second skin, you know, he's, because it's mainstream, it's accepted now. So there's been a vast difference in a quarter of a century, um, you know, between when I did it then and, and, and doing it now. Plus the suit's a lot more comfortable, but I got to shorten my answers because I'm monologuing here. Are you okay? Your eyes are crossing. <laughs> Must be the, the the thing you did flash like yeah right right, yeah. right. I'm I, I'm yeah, hyper speeding yeah. okay did I answer your question uh, yeah I just also want to know also what was different about uh, your experience as a voice actor as well with Professor Zoom uh, my experience of a voice actor I'll tell you it was like this because in 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 Meisner training you're you're taught to really look at the other person that you're doing the scene with. Like I'm looking at you, you're looking, I know what eye you're looking at, I know it, when a muscle moves in your face and everything that you do triggers a reaction in me. And that, Grant and I really used that in our scenes with each other so that if he did something a little different, I'd pick it up and vice versa. Um, what was your question? <laughs> um, just how like different it was like voice acting and just... Oh, well. In voice acting, we're standing around in a semicircle and we're on mics. And so uh, every time I went to talk to someone, I would turn my head and, would... <laughs> and you'd hear from the control room, uh, cut, uh, John, you have to stay on mic. Oh, right, 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 right. So we're doing this thing and then suddenly and I get an eye and I turn my head. <laughs> and they say, uh, okay, uh, this, this, you, you really have to stay on mic. And so I felt like I was in a straitjacket and I couldn't play the scene. You know, I couldn't look at the person I was talking to. Well, you know, they always come back and they have you fix dialogue when there's an electronic problem. And so we all came back in to redo the lines, the few lines that needed to be redone for one reason or another. But they had animated it in between the time we had voiced it the first time and when we came back to replace dialogue. So suddenly I'm watching Professor Zoom. On, the, on stage, you know, talking about, oh, you're a little you're yellow booties, you know, all this stuff. And I'm, suddenly my character comes to life. So we replace our few lines, and then, and then you hear from the control room, um, John, would you mind staying and re-recording your entire part? <laughs> and so I did. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And just the question is not, it, as, as, first of all, you're, you're great with the audience and all of your fans. I, I think we're all really appreciative of how nice you are. Um, oh. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, my question is, you taught a lot of life lessons to Barry, you know, on the show, and it really kind of transcended to, I think, the audience. What is your personal largest life lesson that you've had personally that you could tell? There's a lot of kids in the audience, for instance. See, I just did the talk thing. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, what I'm saying. But what's like a big life lesson that maybe you could tell, you know, some of the kids in the audience, maybe even me, uh, that you have personally. Like, you just no matter how many times, particularly in an, in the acting business, you know, you get so many rejections for every acceptance. I think one of the most important things is no matter how many times you get knocked down, you get back up. You get back up. And I think that's one of the most uh, one of the most important lessons that I have had to learn over a 39-year career as an actor. Because you get a lot. Of, let me tell you one thing: all the reviews for the 1990 Flash were stellar, 9.5 on the Zowie Wowie scale. You know, John Wesley Shipp fills the role great, except 
the Associated Press review, which was one of the meanest reviews I have ever read. I was like, what did I do to you? You know, the moment they said, oh, the great big dramatic moment when, you know, he's holding his dead brother in his arms and he lets out this big scream. It sounds like the Flash suffered from a snapped truss. I was like, ooh, ouch, you know. <laughs> but you get back up, you get back up. You just get back up. If you flop in one part, you know, you get back up. You know, a, a, a line that seems to have resonated with a lot of people is when I'm in the diner with Barry and I'm explaining to him the speed force as Jay Garrick, and I'm explaining to him, we're not gods, we're men, you know, with extraordinary abilities. And the point is, how are you gonna use it? I just said this to a young man who was at my table. Everybody in this room has an extraordinary ability, and I think that's why we love superheroes. Everybody in here has a vein of gold, and something that you do that's unique and irreplaceable, right? So how do you deal with that in your own life? How do you come to terms with that? How, how do you contain that and not let it consume you? That's the story of superheroes, and that's the story of Barry Allen, you know? So. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Now, I'm going to take it a bit simpler than uh, our previous question. Yes. But Can you see him? <laughs> Can you see? Okay. <laughs> but my question for you is, as you've said, you've played Barry Allen, you've played Zoom, Henry Allen, and now Jay Garrett. Yes. Out of those four roles, which of them was the most impactful for you? Which was your favorite, to basically put it simpler? You know, after years old, <laughs> there are no short answers. I hate to tell you. You know, the original Flash was great. It was my first primetime show. We had a third of the back lot at Warner Brothers. It was the most expensive show Warner Brothers had ever done for television. I found myself at the center of it. You know, that was just awesome. But I have to tell you, and I've said this to some people already, I will always treasure the early moments of those scenes with Grant Gustin. You know, people with the new show were saying, Jay Garrick, Jay Garrick, Jay Garrick. And I was like, no, you know, I don't want to compete with myself 24 years ago, and I certainly don't want to compete with 20-somethings running around in a superhero suit, right? But those scenes between Henry being his father in prison, even the setup that it was a phone booth, we couldn't do any of our shtick or our business, right? We went in, we sat down, we picked up the phone, we looked at each other, and as I said, we told the truth to the best of our ability. And it was, it brought up, I think the confined space brought up emotion in us that if we could have been doing our actor stuff, might not have happened. So um, I will always treasure those moments. You know, those moments that uh, people said, how did you generate the emotion in those scenes? The problem was not generating the emotion. The problem was not, was not letting the emotion run away with us. Like when I'm in the infirmary and I get shanked and he's pissed off at me because I'm going behind his back and working with Joe. Yep. You know, and I see on the front page, I get saved and I see on the front page, Flash saves, you know and he's sitting there and he's not ready to tell me. And I say, uh, oh, so yeah, the Flash, uh, <laughs> the Flash saved Joe at the last minute. I uh, guess Joe was pretty lucky, huh? And he goes, yeah, and I say, oh, Flash saved me at the last minute too. I guess I'm lucky too, huh? And he goes, dad, don't you think if I was the Flash, I would tell you? And I love what Henry does here. He doesn't bust him, he doesn't pull his covers. He opens the door this much. He says, yeah, well, if the Flash were my son, I'd tell him a few things. I'd tell him it's a dangerous world, so be careful. I'd tell him he's a hero. He's saving a lot of lives. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. But most of all, I'd tell him that his father was proud of him. And what I love about that is Henry didn't bust him, didn't pull his covers, he opened the door that much so that when Barry was ready, 
in the trickster episode after he said how many people have had the pleasure of being saved from a box of knives i mean i love my job you know but when he whisked me out from the box of knives and i swear grant gustin turned into a 12 year old and he finally gets ready and he pulls that cow back it's like look what i and i say the line uh well you always did look good in red <laughs> you know you know so all right, thank Hope you. Hope that gives you some insight. Oh, yes, very much. Thank you. Yeah, okay. That's awesome. Yes, sir, Jake Eric in the house. Hello. Wait a minute, there's a suspicious signature on the top of your... Who's been writing on my helmet? Oh, me. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> All right, so I just... I very quickly wanted to say... Um, that I was always a fan of the Flash comics, especially the original Golden Age Flash, Jay Garrick, and how he was always a mentor, how he always helped people along their path, and I really think that you've embodied that character to such a degree that I believe that you've helped me and a lot of other people in here along their path as well, so I wanted to say thank you for doing that. Ben, thank you. Thank so, you. And then also, I wanted to ask you, um, I noticed that there's a lot of differences between Barry Allen when you played in the old, in the 90s, yeah. and Jay Garrick, who you play now. Yeah. Um, for example, like they both have a, an inner strength, but it seems that Jay Garrick is more passive, whereas Barry Allen in the 90s was a lot more uh, bullheaded, going yeah. in, running in blind, that sort of thing. Yeah, my, my, my Barry was a little edgier than Grant's was at the beginning. But remember, I was 10 years older than Grant when I was buried, but finish your question. And uh, my question being, uh, how would you, what would you say is the biggest difference between you as Barry Allen and you as Jay Garrick? You know, that's a fascinating question. When I found out that I was gonna be going from Henry Allen, I went to Jay Garrick, I went back and I watched some of the episodes from the 1990 show, because I wanted to kind of remind myself what I did. And my template for Jay Garrick was reaching back into my experience and taking a hold of my Barry Allen and pulling him forward 25 years. And that set the template for my Jay Garrick. Now, he's 25 years older. He's not as impetuous. He's seen a lot more things happen. We don't know what Jay saw when he, went, when he took Wally's place in the Speed Force, do we? But you can bet, you know, it was intense. So I figured there's a certain amount of acceptance, there's a certain amount of cool, you know, I had to reset the warmth of Henry Allen to Jay Garrick, which is, yeah, yeah, I know, I look like your dad, sorry about that, you know, but here, here's the deal, what kind of superhero are you gonna be? It's big boy rules time. So um, I think it was a combination of being secure in his role. At the beginning, Jay feels like this is my speed force, you're just living in it. Kind of, you know, and and then when I find out that Savitar contacted him, not me, we think this myth, we're not even sure it's real, you know, when I find out and I begin to realize the depth and the extent of Barry's abilities, then I have to adjust my own situation. But I think it's maturity, experience, confidence. At the beginning, you know, you're in there, you have that energy, I want to prove something. And then once you feel like you've proven it a little bit, you can sort of step back and own what you've already proven. Does any of that make sense? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Then I'll stop now. Yes. <laughs> thank you for being a mentor to everyone out here, and thank you especially for being a mentor to me. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's very kind. All right, here we go. Here's my pal. What's going on, buddy? Uh, nothing much. I'm just here to ask a question. Uh, hello, audience, also. Uh, Cole, by the way. This uh, is Cole. He and I have gotten to know each other for the last uh, day or two. What's going on, Cole? Um, I just wanted to know, I'm not too sure if this is like a spoiler question or not, but will we see you in season five of The Flash? That's what they tell me. Of course, my question at the end of Enter Flash Time, which didn't the writers turn that one out? Enter Flash Time, where we're all diffusing the nuclear bomb and we're all in there trying to figure it out. Killer Frost, Barry, you know, uh, Jesse Quick, Jay Garrick, you know, I was glad if I did one episode, it was that one. Um, but I had asked that question. I said, is this, you know, it? And then they reminded me that Jay Garrick in the comics was retired the first time he met Barry Allen. 
and he comes out of retirement as needed. I hope they write the story of, uh, of training the new speedster. You know, I hope they, uh, they, they show me training her because I would really enjoy that. If ever there was a character to which legacy is important, of all the superheroes, I think it's Flash, you know. Legacy is so important, and that's one thing I think we really got right, you know, first season, because our producers, you know, Greg Berlani, Andrew Kreisberg, Jeff Johns, uh, David Nutter, our wonderful director, they all grew up with this medium. I mean, they, they could be sitting in this audience. They were fans of the first show. I tell you, when I met Andrew Kreisberg on the set of The Flash, Andrew's about this tall, when I said, it's very nice to meet you, and he said, uh, actually, we've already met. I said, we have? He said, yeah, I was an assistant on the back lot at Warner Brothers when you were shooting the original Flash, and I invaded your space and totally fanboyed out on you. <laughs> and I'm looking at my executive producer going, was I nice? <laughs> so, you know, that's a lesson. You know, today's assistant is tomorrow's boss. But I have no idea what your question was. <laughs> will, will you be in season five? With oh, will I be in season five? It was a very straightforward question. <laughs> they said, you know, people love Jake Eric. Of course you're going to be back. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, I have a question for a friend who couldn't be here today. Um, he wanted to know if when you were talking to Grant about being proud, how you felt in that moment and if you felt like he was your son in that moment. I have to tell you that was an amazing moment and I, and I want to tell you the last take when I teared up. Right before we did my close-up, the director came and whispered in my ear, you want to tell him you love him, but you can't. Oh, wow. Action. <laughs> well, if the Flash were my son, I'd tell him a few things. And that was my subtext. That was my... And that is what triggered the way I delivered those lines. I'm very grateful to that director, you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Hi. Um, I, loved your, I loved your part in Jay Garrick and Henry Allen in The Flash. Thank you. Favorite out of all the uh, CW2, and I have seen them all. Um, <laughs> what was your favorite episode you've ever shot in the, the new Flash show and the old one, like the 90s? It's so hard to say. It's so hard to answer that. Uh, I'll tell you, in the 90s, I felt like I was on a runaway train just trying not to fall off, you know, because we didn't have CGI in those days. And so when we wanted to blow stuff up and shoot flames 35 feet in the air, we had to really do it. Um, episodes that stand out, Deadly Nightshade, working with the great late Jason Bernard as a mentor to my Barry, you know, was a very moving experience. Of course, the Trickster episodes, because Mark Hamill came in. I was self-conscious about working in my suit. Man, Mark came in there like it was Christmas, you know? He was working that unitard, right? Right? I mean, he really helped me loosen up, particularly in the one where he's mind-controlling Barry Allen, and I'm going around knocking over the, you know, and catching the bullets, it's like, it's not guns that kill people, it's these little hard things. You know, throwing the bullets back and being silly. So that, that certainly. As Henry Allen, I've talked about it, the infirmary scene in the pilot. As Jay Garrick, I have to choose Enter Flash Time. A runner-up for Jay Garrick would be when I take Wally's place in the Speed Force, and that moment when Barry realizes that Jay's not coming out. Because it's the first time you see Jay and Barry relating in their own way, similarly to the way Henry and Barry used to relate. So I can't pick one, but those are first things that come to mind. Thank you. Thank you. I should ask you, what's yours? Probably the, the Flash Time episode with yeah. the bomb. No. Yes, yes. Todd Helbing and Sterling Gates turned it out with that episode. I was so privileged to be a part of it. Hi. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm not going to talk about the Flash. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's because I'm short. That's okay. You're adorable. Thank you. 
my question goes with what we've been discussing for the last couple of days. Yeah. We go back a long way. Yes. I watched you on Guiding Light with my mother. Yes. I continue watching you because it was you. Thank you. <laughs> I watched you on The Flash because it was you. Thank you. Now I watch you on The Flash with my son. So there's three generations Incredible. that you have affected. Awesome. As an actor, as a man, how does that make you feel that in your career, ups and downs, mentoring to these people as a teacher, this is really important for me, how does that make you feel? I mean, what can I say? You've said it, you've described it. I have people coming up to my table and they, they reveal, if you open your heart in these kind of experiences, you can have, we've had it, the most incredible interactions, people who have said, you know, I used to watch your show with my dad, who just passed away, or my mom, who just passed away. And now I'm watching the new show with my kids, and you are the thread that runs through that experience and those generations. And I, you know, yeah, I've worked hard to be an actor, but I am mindful every day of my good fortune for people like you in my life. So, thank you, darling. Hello there, young man. How are you? What you got there on your arm? Um, it's a mask. Um, right on. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> 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 Just breathe. Oh, yes. All right, man. We got it. We got this. Keep up the good work. You're the reason we do what we do, man. Thank you. I mean, how could I not love my job, you know? I'm so uh, privileged and grateful to be here. You know, I often say, and I'm gonna go up the stairs because I'm <coughs> years old now, <laughs> and I don't leap and dance the way Grant does anymore, so. But, um, and we it, definitely want you back up here because I just realized you're not on the video anymore when you're down there. I know, but you are. And I, I know, but, but it's just going to be me and I her would, voice. I would much rather look at you. I could maybe move my lips while you talk off screen and then it will be a really confusing YouTube video. No, but it's, you know, it's like I'm very aware, and I've said this in my Q&As before, that, you know, The Flash was 50 years old when I got to it. You know, people talk about Ezra, they talk about Grant, they talk about me. The Flash was here 50 years before I got to it. It was here 75 years when Grant got to it, you know? It was here long before we got to it, and it will remain and go on long after Ezra and Grant and I have passed from the scene. You guys are the keeper of this flame. And after an experience like that, I'm grateful to you for allowing me to take this ride with you for this period of time, okay? Now I'm gonna lighten it up again, okay? <laughs> All right, yes sir. I got a silly question anyways. Ask me a silly First question, off. I need a silly question. <laughs> My best friend got me in the show and I know he's jealous because he's watching right now live. Where is he? See that? What's his name? His name's Eric. Eric, how you doing Eric? <laughs> I'm sorry you're not here, but I'm glad you're here, you know, through the miracle we, of technology. We dub you a pop of flash. But uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> my question is, if you can answer, because uh, someone else took my other question, so I had to come, come up with the spot. If allowed, would you wear the old suit again? Oh, yeah. Woo! Oh, maybe it's the grid? I gotta tell you, somebody asked me if I had saved any of the old suit. And I said, the last I heard of an old suit, half of one was in a plexiglass case in a Planet Hollywood. Which meant it was about this far from people's food. 
I hope it was hermetically sealed. Listen, they couldn't clean those suits. $100,000 to build four suits in 1990. They'd be soaking wet, they'd hang them in my trailer, spray it with Lysol, and it'd still be wet and sticky when I put it on the next day. As you can imagine, it was a pleasant experience for everyone involved. You know, the good news about the new suit is it's an undersuit, an outer leather shell. They can wash that undersuit, man. It's great, you know. <laughs> it's great. Um, it's very funny. Uh, they had asked one of our producers that at San Diego Comic Con. And, uh, and he had said, uh, they had asked him if, uh, and he went, hmm, you're asking me if I would ever put John in his old suit. At which point I went, <laughs> and Andrew said, exactly. <laughs> he said, you know, never say never, but it's always a balance, isn't it? When you're dealing not only with hardcore comic book fans who you need to stay true to, but you're also a deal dealing with a bigger audience. How meta do you go before it all falls apart? But it's a little alarming that I'm having a lot of people ask me that question. <laughs> so we'll see. Thank you so much. Thank you. Another funny thing I have to tell you, Andrew said in that, uh, he said, they said, in a race between Supergirl and Flash, who would win? And without missing a beat, Andrew said, the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh in the mic there. <laughs> Hi. Oh, yeah, uh, my name is Joseph. Uh, Welcome back to Forest Supercon. I remember you were here back in the MAC. Yeah. Uh, way back in the day, I think when they first came in there. And um, I, I really enjoyed that Q&A back there in the day. And I remember you had some really good stories about the set back in the day and was hoping that you would be able to come back uh, into the role or back as a Flash somehow. So great seeing you in the, in, in the new CW show, both as Barry's father and <laughs> now as Jay Garrick. And um, I think the, the question has happens back to the 1990 show. Yeah. Um, what was the funniest moments you had on set? I'm, I'm assuming it's with Mark Hamill, but it could have been something else. I don't know if they were funny, <clears throat> but man, I I did really enjoy the the episode of the Mirror Master when, uh, as I said, we didn't do CGI. So you remember the moment where he threw a mirror, at David Cassidy, and I was covered in snakes. Well, for that shot, in comes the snake wrangler with two big garbage bags of snakes. And they start draping the snakes on me and around. And I had on sunglasses, and a snake crawls over my head. And I see the little tongue. He pushes my sunglasses off. And Danny Bilson just about passed out. He had to walk off the set. You know, uh, that was fun. <laughs> And then there was another time where they hung me from the top of the rafters by my ankles, handcuffed, and lowered me into a big, huge plexiglass case of, filled with water all the way up to my ankles, and I'm upside down, and the deal was I had to open my eyes and start vibrating, and that got, got me out of the cuffs. Well, they dipped me all the way down. My poor, my poor hairdresser, Lana Sharp, she was like, she was beside herself. You're gonna do what to him? You know, and so they put me all the way in. I woke up, I, you know, started moving. Then they dragged me out. They put in Dane Farwell. Remember that name, he was my stunt double. They put Dane in and then they blew up the tank. And out he goes over the loading dock, you know, on, on gallons and gallons and gallons of water. I like to say this, I always felt that my job was to play Barry Allen. My job was to create as realistic and human a character as I could so that you could identify with Barry Allen so that when I came into the suit, you came with me. And we were looking from inside the suit out. Dane Farwell was as much the Flash minus the dialogue, as I was. Because, man, they would, you know, we'd be fighting, we'd do all this stuff, and we're on the third floor of a warehouse down in southeast Los Angeles, and I'd get up to the window, you know, and, and it'd be just about ready, and then they'd take me out, and they'd put Dane on an air ramp, and they'd blow him out the window, you know, and then nothing on the concrete except the padding of the suit, and he'd land three stories down. So I always, give props to Dane Farwell. He also, in Twin Streaks, 
where I'm the blue flash and the red flash on Pollux. You know, he would do those scenes over the shoulder. When I would do one role, he would do the other. He had very similar facial structure. But he would watch me so carefully that he would mimic every move that I did. He was, he was a wonderful guy. Uh, he was a rock, you know. And uh, I'll always be grateful that he was my uh, stunt double. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, sir. I don't know, you're scaring me. I, I, you're slightly less scary now. <laughs> uh, my name is Jeremy. I've been a long time uh, Flash fan and uh, DC. Uh, a little bit of Marvel, once in a great, great while. Yeah. So, my, my question was for you was 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 anybody aware that you were going to be Jay Garrick when you were the man in the um, Iron Mask? Oh, let me tell you that story because everything's a story after <laughs> years old. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, that was initially not me in the Iron Mask. Uh, and they told this actor and his name has escaped me. If anybody knows it, please come tell me. But because it, it's incredible. Anyone who wants to be an actor, here's a lesson in acting, what, what, what a real actor is. They told him to study the way three actors moved our hands when we talked. And the day that they shot all those scenes in the prison, they told him, nobody else, they didn't tell me. They told him it was me. And I swear, other than his hands are a little more slender than mine, the way he's moving his hands and the way friends have said to me, you mean that wasn't you in the Iron Mask? It's so like you. And I said, yeah, that actor whose face was never seen studied the way I moved my hands and used that in that scene uh, 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 to be convincing. No, I was in a costume fitting and I was trying on this brown ragged prison suit and I'm like, Henry's already out of prison. What's up with this? And uh, I thought, well, maybe it's a flashback. And then someone said, of course, you'll be fitted for the Iron Mask separately. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, the what? The Iron what? Fit. They said, oh, my God, you don't know? I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you. So then later in the week, I'm sitting on set with Jesse Martin and Grant Gustin in between scenes. And Grant says to me, so did you hear what you're going to be doing this season? I said, yeah, I'm the man in the Iron Mask. Go figure. And they're like, yeah. That's all you know? I'm like, there's more? And they said, you're the real Jay Garrick, man. I said, get out of town. I couldn't believe it. And then I talked to Greg Berlani, who I worked with ever since Dawson's Creek. And when he told me, thank you, Dawson Krieger's in the house. Yay. And when, uh, I don't want to wait. No. And, uh, and, uh, and, and when he told me that in the span of the last two episodes, I would be killed as one character, come back as that character's doppelganger, who is revealed in the Iron Mask, who turns out to be the real, the real Jay Garrick, which is the character you guys wanted me to be to begin with, I was like, man, Greg, take me out of the equation. That's just masterful uh, channeling of fan expectation. And so, uh, yeah, that totally blew my mind. I have no idea if I asked your question, but I had a good time answering. <laughs> There's a lot of people on the messaging boards and everything that you resume too. You know, and that worked to our favor. Yeah. There were so they were even putting up eyes yeah. and my eyes and doing gradations and saying it's him. Yeah. Look, he's even got a slight astigmatism, you know, whatever. <laughs> and the fact that they were wrong about Zoom made them gun shy about guessing that I was the man in the iron mask. And so that actually worked to our benefit. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. Oh, don't you do it. Shake my hand. All right, man. Hi, darling. Hello. Um, just want to ask, um, between uh, when uh, you were the Flash in the 90s and the new show, what would you say is the message about the culture that you wish that your show had done and vice versa? <laughs> message about the culture. Yes. 
The first thing that springs to mind, and I'm not sure it's going to answer your question, but there was a talk show host that said a very provocative thing, and he talked about the trap in superhero culture. And the trap is, is that if we become spectators in our own life, expecting a superhero to come down and fix seemingly intractable problems. And the lesson is, everybody has to be a superhero in their own lives, in their own communities. And to learn if there are any lessons to be learned about compassion, about justice, you know? Justice without mercy ceases even to be just, you know? It's like there are so many lessons to be learned. Uh, I don't think it ever occurred to Barry Allen to exclude anybody or to judge anybody, religion, race, culture, you know. For Barry Allen, people are people and justice is justice, compassion is compassion, and he realizes mistakes are, are made. And so you have to have compassion because poor Barry, his heart is always in the right place in the right place and his head is just trying to keep up. You know what I mean? He inevitably, it's like watching someone spinning all these plates. People say, everybody told you, don't change the timeline, don't change the timeline, don't change the timeline. And then there's like, I'm gonna change the timeline. <laughs> you know? He said, but his heart's in the right place. It's like watching somebody spin plates. Inevitably, the plates are gonna come crashing down to the ground, but you sweep them up and you start spinning again. I, I think, that if we can take anything from superhero culture, it's not being a spectator, but to find those elements about the superheroes that you're drawn to, that you possess inside yourself and actuate those in your own life. Thank you. And it looks like we have time for just one more. So oh, no. you're going to be our I last question. So much. Everyone else, thank you for waiting patiently. And I want to remind everyone that you can still visit John at his booth uh, this weekend. Um, he will also be here tomorrow. So um, if you didn't get to ask your question, you could always wait online at the booth. Okay. All right. What was your reaction, and when did you hear that you were going to be killed? As Henry Allen. I figured that Henry had one, maybe two good seasons in him. I figured once Barry began to assume his powers, and he, the more Grant Gustin became the Flash, the less they'd need John Wesley ship there. You know what I mean? But I was, I was not prepared for the transition. Mm -hmm. You know that, that's what I was not prepared. When I found out I'd be doing the last four episodes of season two, I figured Henry was drawing to a close. But then, as I said, when they spun out that, that story that I'd be coming back as, man, let me tell you, the last shot with Mark Hamill and I in 1990, uh, after they yelled cut, I ripped those wings off, I threw them in the air, and I swore I'd never be back in another superhero suit. <laughs> never say never. Never say never. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Thanks. So much. Thank you. Thank you, guys, so much. Thank you guys for coming out and how about a big round of applause for John Wesley Schiff.